Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Alexa and we need to have a talk. I am here to admit that it is April 9th and I have not finished a book yet this month. There are many different reasons that I have not yet finished a book this month and I could sit here and explain all of my excuses to you, but excuses or not, it doesn't change the fact that I have not finished a book yet. And it's honestly like throwing me off because I've usually read a lot more by now in the month. Basically, I'm feeling kind of behind. And so I thought it would be fun to film a sort of finish my book with me vlog. It's gonna motivate me to finish my book. And if you also find yourself needing to finish a book, hopefully it can inspire you to finish a book you're in the middle of. So here's the deal. First of all, is my Kindle not the cutest thing you've ever seen? So on Kindle Unlimited, I'm currently reading Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher. And this is the first book in the Lakefront Billionaires series. The second book is coming out sometime in June. And this is actually the first Lauren Asher book I've ever read. I know she has a lot of other popular romance books out there. I just haven't gotten around to reading them. And when I first started reading again in my adult life, I was kind of only reading romance books. And then I discovered that I liked other genres. So I kind of started reading less and less romance and more of other genres. So this is honestly the first romance book I have read in a minute. I'm gonna read you the book description here. So you can kind of follow along with me where I'm at if you're curious. Julian, if I ever caught on fire, Dahlia would fan the flames with a smile. So when she returns to Lake Wisteria, I fully intend to avoid the interior designer, at least until my meddling mother exploits my savior complex. The faster I help Dahlia find her creative spark, the sooner she will leave town. But while I was busy getting rid of Dahlia, I overlooked one potential issue. What happens if I want her to stay? Dahlia. People say the devil has many faces, but I know only one, Julian, my childhood rival and family frenemy. I vow to steer clear of him while recovering from my broken engagement, but then the billionaire makes an irresistible offer. Renovate a historic house together and triple our profits. Our temporary truce becomes compromised when we face years worth of denied attraction and mixed emotions. Giving into our desire is inevitable, but falling in love, that isn't part of the plan. Okay, there's a lot of different tropes in this book. We've got billionaires, we've got second chance romance, we've got rivals to lovers, small town romance, dare I say it, childhood friends to lovers. Lots of good stuff in here is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so my Kindle is saying that I'm 83% done with this book. I have 99 pages left, so it really shouldn't take me long to finish this. But I'm just really needing that serotonin that I get when I finish a book. Okay, before I get started finishing up this book, I'm gonna explain where I'm at. If you don't want any plot explanations or spoilers or anything like that, I'll put a time on the screen that you can skip to. But basically in this book, we're following two families, we have Julian's family and we have Dahlia's family. Julian and Dahlia's moms are best friends. And then Dahlia and Julian are like childhood friends. Dahlia has a sister named Lily. And then Julian has a cousin named Rafa. And Rafa has a son named Nico. Dahlia and Julian are Nico's godparents. Those are all the relevant family characters. So essentially, Julian works in the home renovation industry in Lake Wisteria, and Dahlia moves away to California. She gets engaged, I believe his name is Oliver, and they have this like home renovation show that they do. Then Dahlia finds out that she cannot have kids, and Oliver's family has this like twisted contract where in order for him to receive his family inheritance, he has to marry somebody and have a certain amount of children. So once he finds out that Dahlia can't have kids, he breaks off the relationship and Dahlia is super heartbroken, super depressed. She decides to move back home temporarily to Lake Wisteria. So she kind of reunites with Julian and the other characters. There's a ton of banter in this book and the plot primarily centers around Dahlia trying to recover from her breakup. Julian is this like workaholic who has no time for anything except for work. In college, Julian and Dahlia did kiss, but then Julian's dad died and he was figuring out how to process his grief and he pushed Dahlia away from him. So because of that, Throughout the whole book, it's kind of giving this vibe that they tried their chance at romance and it didn't work out and it will never work out again. So instead of trying to be lovers, they're trying to be enemies. 
when really it should be the other way around, you know? So this historic mansion goes up on the market and Julian convinces Dahlia to go in on it with him. They're gonna renovate this crazy mansion, triple the profits. She's gonna get back her creative spark while she waits for a new TV deal. They kind of come up with an agreement where they won't be rivals until New Year's Eve. So now at this point, they're kind of together. They've also gotten into a sort of prank war and one of the pranks kind of went wrong and they ended up getting arrested. So I'm still kind of waiting to hear where that goes. But yeah, I'm hoping that this kind of is gearing towards a happy ending because at this point, they basically have a contractual relationship that's going to end soon. They haven't finished the renovations on the mansion yet. We don't know what's gonna happen Happen with Dahlia's TV deal, especially since she just went to prison. So a lot of things are still kind of up in the air, but I'm hoping that in this last 18% of this book, everything's gonna get wrapped up with a beautiful bow and I'm gonna get the happy ending that I'm hoping for. Now, there's also a sequel to this book coming out in June. This one's called Love Unwritten. <laughs> Anyways, so this book, I believe, is about Julian's cousin, Raphael, AKA Rafa. Raphael, Ellie Sinclair is a hopeless romantic who writes love songs. I'm a struggling workaholic who could inspire a hundred breakup albums. On paper, we have nothing in common except for my son. For eight months, I avoid her until our summer trip, 14 days, two islands, and one nanny I shouldn't be attracted to. Spending time with Ellie is expected, but enjoying her company, that isn't part of our travel plans. After my divorce, I swore to protect my heart at all costs, even if it means breaking hers in the process. Ellie, what's worse than working for a grumpy single dad, admitting that I once had a secret crush on him in high school? Thankfully, Raphael and I have changed since we graduated from Wisteria High. He is a billionaire with a company to run and a child to take care of. I'm an unemployed songwriter he hired to watch his son and teach music. We coexist without any issues until a vacation changes everything. Lines blur and old feelings for Raphael return with vengeance as I face a new dilemma. Being his son's nanny is one thing, but wishing for more sounds like a heartbreak song waiting to be written. That sounds so good. I am more motivated than ever to finish this book. So I'm gonna get my water, I'm gonna sit outside, and I'm gonna finish this book. After spending all that time outside, I am experiencing some severe allergy symptoms. Unfortunately, I have lost my battle to the outdoor allergens. However, I have won my battle against Love Redesign because I finished the book. I definitely want to let my thoughts on it marinate for a bit before giving it a rating, but I will say that I really 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 enjoyed this book there were a couple of things that i was hoping i would get answers to like i said kind of hoping that the book would get wrapped up in a nice little bow and again i'm gonna put a time on the screen if you want to skip over this part and not hear any plot summaries or spoilers or anything like that. So the first thing I was wondering what was going to happen with Dahlia's TV show situation. The whole jail thing like ended up not really mattering that much. And she was offered a TV show back in California away from Lake Wisteria, but she didn't want to move away from Julian. Julian offered to move with her, but she felt so bad potentially uprooting his entire life and bringing him to California. And she liked being home so much that ultimately she decided to not take the the TV deal, but she was really disappointed because she loves doing her TV shows. She was ultimately pretty disappointed about the TV show, but obviously being with Julian was what she cared about most, so she prioritized that by staying in Lake Wisteria. But then Julian calls in a favor to his friend 
whose brother, I believe, works at a TV station. And he tries to see if he can strike up a deal for her. And he does. So she gets her show. And not only that, but she gets to film it in Lake Wisteria. So she doesn't have to move back to California and she gets her TV show. And another thing, like I said, they're kind of working on this like mansion house together. And it turns out that this house that they've been working on for the entire book is the house that they end up moving into. That part was so cute. And then in the epilogue, it takes place like six months later and they end up having an impromptu wedding because they just can't wait to get married and move into their mansion house. So they get engaged, they get married, they have the wedding. It's so cute. And also in the epilogue, we hear mentions of the nanny Ellie, who is supposed to be the main female character in the second book. So I was really glad that she threw that in there because that just kind of got me more excited to read that book. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I was wondering about. Also the prank wars that they were doing had kind of ill intent. They were a bit vicious at times, but as they begin to date, and by the way, they end up dating for real this time. They cancel the whole like deal that they made that they're just gonna be together until New Year's. They stop denying the feelings that they have for each other. They get all that sorted out. And the prank wars kind of turn more into this like wholesome competition that they have against each other. Like for example, at Christmas, they both try to compete to give their godson the better present. You know, wholesome stuff like that. So yeah, I would say ultimately it has a very happy ending and it sets up the second book really well by mentioning the nanny. And there's mentions of Raphael like throughout the book. So now I have to wait two months to read that, but that doesn't even matter because I have plenty of books to entertain myself until then. Let me know if you liked this more casual style vlog type of video. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below letting me know anything you wanna let me know. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and make sure that you're subscribed so that you can see more videos from me in the future. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Hey. <laughs> uh.